Okay. So after doing some study into the quadrivium, uh, I was able to create this um, geometric diagram of the Great Pyramid of Giza. So this is a net for the Great Pyramid, and if you were to cut out this black line here, you would have the net you could then fold up the triangles and you would have the Great Pyramid of Giza in all of its magical proportionality. So I'm going to show you how to create this uh, using various um, discoveries, none of which are mine, this is just stuff that I learned about, and I've combined various discoveries into one diagram. So let's do this. So we begin by creating a circle with center point A and it runs through edge point B and then we'll create a line going from B to A and we'll create a point on that line where it intersects our circle. That will be point C. Now we create a circle from B to C and a circle from C to B like so. And we'll create points where these larger circles intersect with one another. Okay. So now we'll create a line going from D to E. And now we have horizontal and vertical lines going through our circle. So to begin with, um, we need to create a pentagon. And now the following technique that I'm going to show you is perfect uh, in that it creates a perfect pentagon or pentagram, a five-pointed division of a circle. Now let's see if I can remember this. So we begin with B. We create a circle from B to A, like so. And then we'll create a point here where our new circle BA intersects with the original circle AB. And now we create a parallel line from our vertical line that runs through this new point, point H. Now this vertical line runs through the horizontal line and we'll create a point there and that's point I. Now this is the genius bit, the ingenious bit. So you'll notice here that um, I, the point I, is halfway between points A and B. This is the midpoint. Right, so if I was to create a circle here, it would meet up with both of those quite nicely. Uh, I'm not going to do that, however. I'm going to create a circle from I that runs through our top point, F. There we go. Now when I do that, this circle is going to intersect through the horizontal line. And now, this new point J uh, creates the golden section, the phi ratio. Okay, between CJ and JA, that, that relationship is phi, um, which is a very powerful number. It's found throughout all living organisms and living processes. So now I'm going to create a circle from that top point F runs through point J and we're almost there. We, that gives us another two points. Our first point we get for free and that, that's going to be point F. Our next point is going to be here, K, and then the next point is going to be here, L. And that's where our new circle from F to J intersects with the original circle. So these distances from K to F and from F to L are fifth of this circle. Okay, so now I'm going to create a circle from K to F, and I'll create a circle from L to F. And now we're done. So from L to F, it's quite hard to see the circle that I just created. 
So from K to F, come around and there's our point M. And from L to F, uh, this circle here, and that's where it intersects with our original circle, and that becomes point N. So now we have a perfect pentagon. So, how do we create the Great Pyramid of Giza from a pentagon? question on everybody's mind right now I'm sure um, so now from our pentagon we create a pentagram which is a five-pointed star there is the five-pointed star this is all getting a little bit cluttered here so I'm going to dash some of these lines uh, just to make it easier to see what's going on. <coughs> okay, there. Um, so I've dashed some of these working lines. Um, I created some green circles, which are the phi related circles. And our pentagram is now in orange. So, this is our five-pointed star, the pentagram. And what I'm going to do now is mark one of these points. I'm sort of tempted to mark all of them, but I think I only really need to mark one of them. So, here's our new point, O. We're going to create a circle from A to O, like that. And... Now, we are going to create points where this new circle intersects with our horizontal and vertical lines, like so. Okay, that's lovely. So the next thing to do is create a square um, that surrounds that circle that we've just created. So if we create parallel lines from the horizontal running through P and R, these new points, and then we create vertical parallel lines running through Q and S, we now have this square. And I'm going to mark the corner points of this square T, U, V, and W. Now we almost have it. So all we have to do now is go from T up to F, which is our to upmost top point of the original circle, from U to F. Okay. From U to V from V to B. So basically what's happening here is we are creating the triangular faces that will be on the sides of the pyramid. And this square in the middle will be the base. So if I now turn these into black lines, we'll be able to see with a bit more clarity what's going on and there it is that is a net for the Great Pyramid of Giza and if you were to cut out along this black line here and then fold along these gray lines and fold these points, F, B, G, and C, if you were to fold them up, 
so that they met in the middle, you would have a 3D paper cut out of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which would have lots of beautiful relationships, uh, such as the phi relationship between the height of the side and the, I want to say radius of the square on the base, but it's not quite the right word. Um, lots of beautiful mathematical relationships, a very wonderful shape, and uh, that is how you create it from scratch. Um, that is all. Thank you.